So in this lecture, I just want to finish up, you know, this presentation or this really basic sketch of what we mean by liberal and liberalism. So remember, in the last two lectures, we've looked at this list of defining features, state neutrality, legal equality of citizens. We talked a lot about what those mean in the last lecture. In this lecture, I want to say a little bit, probably not quite as much, because we'll mention both of these later, go into more depth, but a little bit about emphasis on rights and the rule of law. Then I want to finish up saying a little bit about the support or, you know, the sort of moral idea and ideals behind liberalism. So, an emphasis on rights. Citizens have clear rights. Think, think of the American system, a right to free speech, a right against unreasonable search and seizure, a right to religion, a right to due process. Not only do citizens have clear rights, but the government can limit those rights only for very important reasons. Now, you know, it's not, it's not quite right to say that the government can never do anything contrary to people's rights, right? The government can and should limit your right to free speech. You know, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. You can't say that your neighbor has done something awful when he's completely innocent of it, right? You can't go around saying, you know that he's a child molester or something with no evidence when that's just false, right? So the government will put limits on rights, but the government needs really important, really weighty reasons for doing so. Um, we'll talk a bit more about this in the unit on drugs. I want to start that one with, you know, a fuller account with a lot more about what rights are. But just for now, know that, you know, rights are something that the government needs a very good reason to violate, um, not violate, to limit. Um, we'll talk more about what those reasons are um, in the next unit. Finally, the rule of law. Rule of law means that everybody has to follow the law. Even powerful people have their power limited by the law and other rules. No matter who you are in a liberal system, there are rules you have to follow. Again, think about the contrast with other systems. You know, in North Korea, Kim can do whatever he wants, right? He doesn't have any limits. I mean, I guess if he makes his generals mad enough, they might murder him. But, you know, there's not really any explicit legal limits on what he can do, right? In the Amer you know, think of, if you think about, if you read up on Europe, at least Eastern Europe under communism, members of the party could often do whatever, you know, they wanted, especially if they had important positions, right? If some member of the party wanted you to go to jail, you were probably going to jail just because they said so. In liberal systems, it's not supposed to be that way. The president, senators, congressmen, governors, whoever are supposed to have to follow the rules. The same goes for bureaucrats and police and other employees and officials of the government. They have to follow the rules, and the rules limit their power. And I think this is important, and I'll say a little bit about why it's important, because this will come up later. You know, part of it just is, we think it's bad when other people can arbitrarily push us around and make us do what they want. The rule of law is supposed to limit or at least control that. You know, the secret policeman in East Germany can make you do whatever he wants because if he says you're going to some kind of labor camp, you're going to the labor camp, right? 
hopefully in our system, you know, no one in a position of authority can do that to you because hopefully they are limited by certain rules. We'll talk much more about this arbitrary um, pushing people around later when we talk about Elizabeth Anderson's work on um, work and why she thinks bosses are dictators. This will come up again, but it's very important. Okay, so you guys have probably recognized, you know, the senses in which the American system is a liberal one, and, and the senses in which the Founding Fathers definitely thought in a liberal manner, right? But again, you know, I don't want this to rest on, you know, an argument from authority, or I don't want to appeal to some kind of patriotism, you know, liberalism is American, don't you want to be American, right? It's not a great argument. Not a great moral argument, at the very least. So I want to say a little bit about the arguments for liberalism. I mean, I'm not going to, like I said, give you a developed or well-sketched argument, but I do want to say a little bit. There are many different arguments for liberalism. You know, one of them is just a sort of utilitarian argument, right? People don't like it when the state meddles in their lives, when the government pushes them around and meddles in their life, so everyone will be happier if we put certain limits on the government. Um, you know, I, I think that tends to be true. We'll, we'll talk a lot more later about whether utilitarianism, how well it fits with this. But, you know, there have been some very important liberal thinkers, like um, Mill himself, John Stuart Mill, you'll hear about... Um, who were utilitarians. But I think the more important arguments, the better arguments for liberalism, often go back to recognizably Kantian considerations. You know, Kant himself was the, the person who kind of put this explicitly, who formulated it, but all these ideas were in the air in Kant's time. You know, Kant and Jefferson... Kant and the other founding fathers, I mean, they didn't have any real communication, but they lived at the same time, right? And the idea, part of this is that human beings have freedom. We have autonomy. We have this ability to decide what is and isn't good for us. And so, you know, this idea of human beings are free and the government and everybody else must respect that, right? You can already see how this is important, right? You know, the state ought to be neutral because you respecting your freedom, your autonomy means that you get to decide what is and isn't a good life for you. The state should respect your rights because, you know, that's part of respecting your freedom. The government should follow the rule of law because respecting your freedom means not being able to arbitrarily push you around, make you do stuff on a whim, right? So a lot of this idea behind liberalism is this thought that human beings are free, that we have a certain dignity, that we should decide what is and isn't good for us, these recognizably Kantian thoughts. And like I said, Kant himself really was the first to make this super explicit, but a lot of other liberal thinkers like Locke, Jefferson, you know, had this idea, I think, in the background, even if they didn't sketch it as exactly as Kant did. A closely related idea, and one we'll talk about a lot more later in the semester when we get to Rawls, is this idea of a so-called social contract. Um, and the idea here is this. If you had the choice, if you had to explicitly agree to the government, what would you agree to? What kind of government would you have in place? And what kind of rules would you want that government to follow? And the thought here is, um, there are certain 
rule, there's certain things you wouldn't want the government to do. You know, would you allow the government to meddle in religion? Well, no, right? I mean, why think the government's going to do that? Why think the government's going to be any better at deciding what the true religion is than you as a person are, right? Would you want the government to treat some people better than others? Well, you know, you might think you would, but you know, how do you know you're going to be the person who gets treated better, right? Rawls has an interesting way of putting this. You know, the guys in the um, podcast mentioned Rawls a lot. I'm not going to get too deeply into Rawls just yet, but I think it's worth saying a little bit about his basic thought, right? Rawls says, imagine that you were picking the rules for society. You were picking the rules the government has to follow. Basically, you are picking a constitution. But guess what? You don't know who you will be in society. You don't know who you are. You don't know your race, your religion, your gender, your age. You don't know any of these things. You just know you're going to have to live under whatever rules you pick. And Rawls will say, well, think about this, right? If that were the case, you wouldn't pick rules that allowed the government to impose some vision of the good life on you or to favor a certain religion. Why? You might, after you've picked the rules, find that you have a religion completely opposed to whatever the state, the government wants to enforce. You might find that your version of the good life is completely different than everybody else's in society and you don't want your, them forcing their version of the good life on you. You wouldn't pick a system that doesn't have legal equality. You wouldn't pick a government that treats some people way better than others. Why? Well, you don't know who you are. You might pick this system and find that you are one of the people that everyone wants to treat badly, right? You would want the government to respect rights, you know, take free speech, right? You might pick the rules, and then come to find that you have really unpopular opinions that are really important for you to express. Search and seizure, you might pick the rules, then you might find that you are the kind of person the police like, well, tend to suspect, right? That if there's not some protection from search and seizure, you're going to constantly be the one who's getting searched. Rule of law, you might be a powerful, important person, but it's just as likely, in fact, way more likely you're not going to be, so you would want the people who have power to have to follow the rules, right? Um, Rawls calls this the original position, but the thought is pick rules that you would be able to agree to no matter who you might be in society. Again, you know, I said this idea of liberalism is Kantian, well, you can think back, you know, Kant's formula of universal law fits very much with this sort of original position Rawl sketches. Um, fits very much with this whole social contract idea. So we'll talk more about this, but hopefully you guys both understand what liberalism is and why people think that a liberal government is better than the alternatives, the moral foundations of it, right? This respect for human freedom, these Kantian sort of considerations. Like I said, there are other arguments, other considerations for liberalism, but I think these are probably the most important. They're the ones I'm going to put the most emphasis on.